All right, so today we traveled out to Titusville, Florida to Comp Air, check out their newest model, which is the 6.2. We're gonna run through the aircraft here, and then afterwards, in a separate video, we'll give you a factory tour. A six-seater experimental aircraft you can build as a kit. How many of those do you see out there flying? Not many. Which is why I jumped at the opportunity to travel out to Comp Air to see it in person. I've always been interested in seeing how things work and how they're made. And I'm sure a few of you out there have a similar interest. So here is a little peek behind the curtain at Comp Air Aviation in the manufacturing process. We'll give you a full tour in an upcoming episode where we visit all three of their locations in Florida. Now for the details of the Comp Air 6.2 Experimental Kit Aircraft. My name is Ron Luck. I'm the president of Comp Air Aviation. We design and build amateur built aircraft. That's what we do. We're in Titusville, Florida at our offices. And behind me, you'll see our brand new Comp Air 6.2. Uh, this actually is the eight, 18th airplane I've designed and built. So, been doing this for a long time. So I started off, my dad and I built a very easy way back in 1978. And uh, yeah, I know I'm aging myself. And I built a long easy with my wife and that was great. So my father wanted to build a sea wind. So we went to Oshkosh and looked at the airplane and I didn't like it. And my dad says, well, can you do better? And I said, yeah, I think we can. But my father invented the LED, so brilliant, brilliant man. And he said, do you think we could do better? And I said, of course we could. So we built an airplane called the Air Shark back in 1984. We brought it to Oshkosh. It is a four-place amphibious airplane, hull plane, similar, similar in configuration to a Lake Amphib. I currently hold the world speed record with that airplane at 201 miles an hour with a 200-horse engine. And that's really what got me immersed in this business. Um, and this is basically all I've ever done since college. In fact, the very first airplane was a float plane with a hearth, 90 horsepower, two cycle hearth engine on it. We brought it to Oshkosh, uh, to Lakeland. Um, I don't remember what year, 98? Yeah, about 98, 1998. And the airplane got more and more sophisticated as our customers became more and more sophisticated. They wanted different engines. We, we took the, the hearth engine out um, after it seized five times. It put a Lycoming 180 in it, 180 horsepower Lycoming. And then the airplanes got bigger and bigger. And then we were the very, we we're the first company to actually put a turbine on an uh, amateur built aircraft. So we chose a Walter 601 because they were cheap. And we put a 601D in one of our airplanes and it, just no turning back from there. So the airplane behind me here is a Comp Air 7. Uh, this airplane was built in 2000, I think 2001. Uh, so it's, it's, it's in mid production. So we started in the early, in the mid nineties building the airplane. We were strictly a piston powered airplane at that point. We decided to put, everybody wants a bigger engine and a bigger engine. And that's how the evolution of airplanes has always been. So we went to 300 horse and then eventually to the turbines, the 650 horsepower, uh, Walter turbine 601 D and that's what's powering this airplane now. So this, this is on our floats. We call them super floats. We do build a line of floats all the way from actually a true ultralight float all the way up to a 7,000 pound displacement float. So we build all kinds of floats. This is an amphibious set. We build the gear, we build everything. This is 100% built in-house. Um, so it's a, it's a nice 150 knot cruise uh, amphib. Carries, it, we only have four seats in it because the truth is when you put 600 pounds of floats on the bottom, you're only gonna get four people in it. You know? And so that's what this airplane is configured for at this point. Now, there is just one quick thing in the middle there, there's a wing. And that we're experimenting now with the concept of putting a wing between the floats to carry the weight of the float. So that wing flies pretty much 90% of the weight of the float is flown, that, that wing flies, which will increase your gross weight, increase your useful load of the airplane again. So you get back 90% of the weight you lost putting floats on an airplane. So this is our new airplane, Comp Air 6.2. It's just uh, been flying for a little over a year. I've got about 125 hours on it. The airplane is 100% carbon fiber. Uh, we mold everything in-house. We have uh, our own facilities to do that. 
but yeah, so this is a, a, a carbon fiber airplane. Um, it's powered by a Lycoming TIO 540, 350 horsepower turbocharged engine. And it's a six passenger airplane, has a 2,000 pound useful load. So it makes a really, the idea of the airplane was to make a really good family plane. You know, where you can actually carry your family. You can carry six people and baggage in this airplane and fuel. And you have an 840 mile range, uh, nautical mile range. So, you know, it was, it, that was really the concept behind this airplane is to be a family, family airplane. Uh, going back to the construction of it, uh, carbon fiber, the wing is, is huge. Is this a solid, a single piece wing? Yeah, the wing on this airplane is a single piece wing, which means from tip to tip, it's just one wing. The spar is continuous, the drag spar is continuous. We do that because it's a, uh, it makes it a stronger uh, way to build the wing because there's no intersections anywhere. And also for the builder, it makes it easier to, you're not trying to get two wings aligned. You just, you build a wing and that's it, you know. Uh, we build the spar, we build all the critical structural stuff so that when you get the wing and spars in it, you, you, you can't make mistakes. That's the idea, was really to help the builder. So how many different components, if you were to order this as a kit versus a factory assisted, uh, how many different components do you receive? And this is already an advanced quick build kit, I assume. Yeah, what you get with the airplane is the fuselage is put together so the, the fuselage mold incorporates the vertical stabilizer. So it's just really two halves that go together. There's a whole bunch of ribs put in there and in the vertical. And <clears throat> the wing comes, it's all molded. Everything you see that's painted on the outside of the airplane is molded. So that all comes that way. And you get the spar and the drag spar and all the ribs. We, we cut and fit all the ribs for you. Uh, the horizontal is the same way. We, we make it, we put the spar in it. Uh, all the structural stuff is done inside the fuselage. You, you will build some structural uh, reinforcements for the engine mount to reinforce for the engine mount, that kind of stuff, but the primary structure is done. All right, I'm gonna pop in here real quick to talk about our sponsors. As you know, I can't do this all on my own. We got to have somebody to help fuel that truck. We try really hard to work with uh, sponsors that provide a good service and a good quality product. So let's talk about those guys right now. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, the premier provider of glass panel avionics systems for experimental and light sport aircraft. Wide Open Door Company at WideOpenDoorCo.com, your premier destination for high quality doors, including aircraft hangar doors. Warp Drive Propellers at WarpDriveInc.com, providing quality, solid carbon fiber propellers for many light sport and experimental aircraft. South Mississippi Light Aircraft at FlySMLA.com, an independent master repair center and a training facility for Rotax engines. Edge Performance at EdgePerformance.no, specializing in fuel injection conversions, performance upgrades, and complete engines for your aircraft. Pioneer Control Grips at PioneerControlGrips.com. Comfort, convenience, and style. Handcrafted custom wooden grips with many styles to choose from. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for new videos and easy to navigate playlists and so much more. Speaking of fueling that truck, if you guys want to join us on our Patreon page, become patrons of this channel. Just search on Patreon for Experimental Aircraft Channel sign up at several different levels and at certain levels we even have scheduled video meetings once a month so check that out so the the performance envelope of the airplane is 64 knot cr uh, stall speed uh, cruise speed depends on your altitude this is a turbocharged engine so we do i do like to fly high so if even at 15,000 feet it's about 185 knot cruise up to 21 or 22 it goes up to about 190 knot cruise speeds um, and at that you're burning 19 gallons an hour. So it's reasonable, it carries 100 gallons of fuel. So that gives us about an 840 mile range with, with IFR reserves. Uh, rotation, uh, full power, obviously. Uh, I, wrote, I like to rotate at 70 knots, or 69 to 70 knots is when I rotate the airplane. I establish a climb, I like to accelerate to, to 85, maybe 90 knots for climb out. I do that for one minute, so I'm clear of all the obstacles. I let the airplane accelerate to 100 knots and what happens is the initial rate of climb is gonna be about at gross weight 12 to 1500 feet a minute. I accelerate to 100 knots uh, after one minute and I'll do that for about two, two minutes. I like 130 knot crew, uh, to climb and usually you're going somewhere. So you wanna get somewhere. So at 130 knots at gross weight, we're averaging 500 feet a minute all the way to 20,000 feet. So that, that's, why, that's my flight, normal flight profile. 
And then the yeah. more aggressive climb, what would you be seeing? Numbers? 100 knots and maybe 1,200 feet a minute. And you can again do that. It stops real high climb rates, about 10,000 feet a minute. It starts to really taper off and obviously air densities and all that stuff play into it. But you, you still have the power. Uh, what kind of surfaces can you can this handle? The airplane was designed with utility in mind because most people only get to have one airplane. So if you're going to have one airplane, you want to get the best bang for your buck. So the airplane was designed, it is a tricycle gear, um, and it, the landing gear is a, an aluminum landing gear with uh, 606 mains. We can accommodate larger tires. We can go with the uh, Tundra tires. We can go with a 10 inch main if we want to do that. So the idea of the airplane is for uh, multiple surfaces. So yes, you can go into soft field, um, and uh, short field. And that, that's, that's again one of the things about having an airplane with more. Basically, if you can fly a 206 there, this airplane will, will go. Anywhere you can take a 206, you can take this airplane. And, and what is the gear made out of both uh, mains and nose? Well, the main gear is a solid piece of 7075 T7. It's uh, an aluminum, goes one end to the other. So there's no big bulkhead that has to take the, tor the, the, uh, the loads from the gear. So it's easier to do it that way. Um, the nose gear is just a, a air strut, uh, air over oleo, uh, normal strut. Um, and again, it's a good hardy uh, gear system for landing anywhere you want to go. So what are you using to drag this thing through the air and uh, efficiently? Well, the, we chose uh, uh, Lycoming TIO 540 8E2A, which is a dual turbo, dual intercooled, 350 horsepower Lycoming. Great engine. The airplane was designed for a 300 horse. So 300 horse, a 580 is what, 315 to 325. So that would be an excellent choice for the airplane if you don't want to mess with a turbocharged engine. The propeller that we chose is a Hartzell. This is their new top prop. It's a, a all carbon fiber propeller. So it's very efficient. It's, it's their newest propeller. So that's what drags this thing around. So getting in the airplane, we have a step. Uh, this folds up. This also doubles as an armrest when it's up in stored position. Mm -hmm. So you get the benefit of both. So, ah, foot up, grab hold, and that's, that's how I get in the plane. And then, seat flies forward to your, whatever your flying position is, this seat is adjustable up and down, so I'm not particularly tall, so I keep it up. So the controls in the aircraft are con conventional yokes, um, and rudder pedals. The Cable, the uh, ailerons are run or cables as it runs through the fuselage. When it gets to the wing, it translates to a push rod. So there's push rods that run out the wing to the ailerons. The rudder is all cable to the rudder and elevator again is cable to the back and then it picks up into a push rod in the back for control. Um, big doors, we have, as you can see, three doors. We enjoy really excellent visibility. And that's one of the things I like about a low, a high wing aircraft is I like to look down and see where I am, see where I'm going. And, and other people do too. So everybody in the back gets a really good view out of the airplane. So the instrument panel in the airplane is, it comes cut, you, you have to cut out whatever you want for uh, radios. In this case, we chose to be a completely Garmin panel. Um, I think this is a very popular uh, instrument panel. It has the dual big screens, backup horizon, autopilot, and a, a, a 650 for the radio. So we've got we have plenty of stuff in here to fly with. Uh, the, but the instrument panel is up to you. You know, you can do whatever you want. This bulk, this piece here, um, is comes with kit. It is. It, it's. It's not technically structural, but you have to have that to support the instrument panel. It's the only place you can. The only way to support an instrument panel. Um, you know. So. And how many seats again is this? This is a six-passenger airplane, six seat. And you got the back removed for cargo at the moment. Yes, that's exactly right. We have, we can put the seats back in. So we did put big flaps on the airplane. One of the reasons that we like large flaps is we like to be on floats. We're a float manufacturer, so we like to be on floats. You can't come on and off the water slow enough. So we put big flaps on the airplane and they go down uh, 40 degrees. It reduces the stall speed, it flaps up, it's about 70 knots. So we get about a six knot decrease in stall speed because of the flaps. Uh, the flaps are just a hinged flap. <clears throat> but it is a slotted flap, which does help the CISA bell a lot. Again, the ailerons on the wing are pretty big. They are a, what, uh, they're a freestyle aileron, which means that part of the aileron comes down into the airflow to help reduce the load on the aileron itself. Airflow goes over the top. 
works really, really well. We, were, we ratioed the ailerons two to one, which means the aileron moves up uh, two degrees when the other one's only going down one. So there is a ratio for that, again, to lighten up the load of the aileron, make it more effective. It also reduces adverse yaw. It, 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 the horizontal stabilizer on the airplane is also large. We do that because it increases the CG range, and with a big six-place airplane, you've got to have a lot of CG range. Uh, the elevator's big. As you can see, the elevator itself is, is, is large. Uh, again, flying on floats, you're going slow when you're landing and, and, and maneuvering and stuff slow. So you've got to have a lot of control of the airplane. We do lose a slight amount of uh, performance at the little top end because of the bigger control surfaces, but it's well worth it. When you're flying your family around, you want to be safe. You want to have plenty of control of the airplane. And it, you know what? We all love to fly so much. Speed shouldn't be as important. <laughs> The vertical stab is big. If you look at this airplane, it really could use a little bit smaller vertical stab. Again, going back to liking uh, really good control of an airplane and stability because I fly IFR, I like a nice stable airplane. And also, I did that to accommodate bigger engines. We're building another one with a 650 horse uh, Walter engine in it. And we're probably gonna build one with a Honeywell TPE 331-10, which is a 750 horsepower engine. To build this airplane from a kit, just as a standard kit, you're going to have 2,500 to 3,000 hours of labor in the airplane. Um, it is a big airplane, and there's a lot of stuff to do. We do offer builder's assistance to reduce that time, so there's several phases that you can, you can opt in. Um, you have to participate, obviously, but we'll go all the way through uh, putting everything together, doing all the laminating so you don't have to do that in your shop. Uh, we'll go all the way to paint if you want to. Um, so we, we have all of that available to you. And it, it's pretty much a la carte. You can have as much or as little as you want done. You know, we do have an AMP on staff. Keith does the engine stuff. Uh, so we can do everything. Our electronic shop, our radio shop is second to none. And so we'll do, we'll do whatever. For current pricing and builder assist information, check out their website at compairenterprises.com. And if you want that factory tour with their partner company, Composite Technologies, check back real soon for our very next episode, where you'll also find some not-so-aviation going on in their factory. And now would be an excellent time for you to subscribe, like this video, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode. See you next time here on the Experimental Aircraft Channel.